Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with one of the most pointless releases that has ever come my way, which means we're going to have a good time talking about it, right? So maybe it had a purpose after all. The purpose is to allow us to exult in our feelings of superiority and mockery. It is, oh God, Maris Jansen's Rehearses Stuff. Four discs from BR Classic. I, I can't even begin to wrap my brain around this, but we will try, of course. You get four discs with rehearsals of four works. They are Strauss's Ein Heldenleben, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Strauss's Don Juan, and Sibelius Symphony Number no. 2. Now, these are included in that big Janssen's box that I talked about a while ago, or some of them, and you can see some of these on YouTube, too, although you can't see them actually rehearse. See, that's silliness number one. Silliness number one is that watching or attending a rehearsal is primarily a visual event. You want to hear what the result is, obviously, but you want to see how the conductor interacts with the musicians of the orchestra. Now, Janssen's is unfailingly polite, professional, businesslike. He knows exactly what he wants. He sings about as well as I do. He particularly likes doing string articulation where he goes, you know, he sounds kind of like a, a little chipmunk or a woodpecker hammering away. It, it's, it's absolutely a waste of time to listen to this blind most of the time. Now, I have to say, there are some conductors who are fun to listen to or watch or just listen to, not see them. Thomas Beecham, for example. Toscanini was fun. Stokowski, he could be a nutcase. But Janssen's isn't one of them. You know, just like his, his interpretations themselves were often decent, middle-of-the-road, vanilla sort of performances. He had a decent, middle-of-the-road, vanilla personality. And that's what you hear in most of these things. I mean, I was listening to the Don Juan, and I was... I, I was amazed. The very opening of Don Juan, you know, it's da 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 crash. And he was saying, nicht so hectic, not so hectic, not so hectic. Well, this is why his Don Juan is so boring. And so you get to learn in excruciating detail just how he managed to put together an excruciatingly dull performance of Richard Strauss's Don Juan. Yeah, don't be hectic, guys, especially when the music calls for a certain amount of hectosity. You know, it really does. It wants you to be a little hectic. It's Don Juan, for God's sake. It's not. So, yeah, it's a measured, very considered, very safe performance of Don Juan. And one thing Don Juan is not is safe. So, yeah, that's that one. And then there's, well, there's Unheld and Laban, like I said, and Beethoven's Fifth, and Sibelius, too. Oh, what a snooze that is. My goodness. He does tell the violins, play more spiccato in your run leading up to the big tune. You know, he does that. Well, the violins are playing a little bit, he says. He says, ambition, ambition bright. It's a little too broad, he says. Play it more spiccato. And so they go, chicka, 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 chunk, 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 like that. That's the woodpecker business, right? And it's so slow. Oh, it's so, it's so just straightjacketed. Terrible. Just terrible. So, yes, we get to learn how he does that in Sibelius' Second Symphony. Listen, I, I, I have nothing against this man. He was a fine conductor and by all accounts, a delightful person to work with. But my goodness, what is this for? What, what are you going to learn from this by not being able to see him, first of all, 
and only being able, I mean, oh, by the way, it's all in German, of course. So if, unless you understand German, which I sort of kind of do, when you mix it with German and my original knowledge of Yiddish and my studies of German, because I was a German historian for many years, and, and, and the, the, you know, the, the musical terminology, which we all kind of pick up as we go, um, you can understand what's going on here pretty well. You really can. And of course, you can hear the difference between what the orchestra does that's not what he wants and what they do that is theoretically what he wants. But who cares? I mean, who really cares? What are we learning from this? I, I, I hate to say it, but the guy wasn't a genius. I mean, watching someone like Leonard Bernstein do these rehearsals is inspirational. It's amazing to see what he does and how he does it and why he does it. I mean, it really is. It's, it's, it's a world apart. But to watch the Ansons just rehearse a dull version of these repertoire chestnuts, you, 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 no, I'm sorry. It's just no, a big resounding no. It's a waste of time and four discs of it. And I, you know, I suppose it will go in some sort of archive somewhere and there may be students of conducting who will get something out of this, both positive, both positive and negative, maybe how to do something that they're interested in or what not to do in order to get um, a better performance out of the band. I don't know. All I know is that, is that unless you are completely besotted with uh, Maestro Janssen's, there is no reason in the universe why you would want to hear this. I mean, I did, and I feel those hours are irretrievably lost, and it upsets me. I could have spent them doing something else, but this is part of my job, and so I'm trying to save you, to save you the endless agonies, especially since, I mean, I know my audience, right? We're all getting up there. We're a little long in the tooth, aren't we, folks? We don't have that much time left. You don't want to spend it with this. It's for young people. Maybe. Keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.